believe it's time to start. Welcome everybody to this uh, meeting, Tuesday meeting of the Board of Commissioners in our workshop for April the 19th, 2022. So if you'll stand with me, uh, we'll do an invocation. Uh, first the Pledge of Allegiance and then the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice, for all. Let us pray. Lord, we hear a siren going by, and we, that reminds us of, of your protections for us. Thank you for those who risk their lives to protect us. Thank you for your blessings. May the things we do tonight be pleasing in your sight, and may they uh, advance the cause of the town of Anger in every way. Amen. All right, we, you have the agenda before you. Is there a motion that the agenda be approved? I make a motion that we approve the agenda. Thank you, sir. All in favor, please raise your right hand. So let it be written, so let it be done. Okay. Our first item is a presentation uh, on Andrew's Southwest Drainage Study. Uh, Jerry, would you introduce that, please? I'm going to actually ask Bill to introduce our guest. With uh, Jerry, would you ask <coughs> Bill to introduce that, please? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, as you know, many months ago, um, we put out RFQs <coughs> for the drainage issues that we've had in, in the Southwest Andrew Basin. Um, those issues, for me, go back to the 1980s. Uh, been an issue. We knew that it was going to be a costly issue, but we've never really sat down and analyzed it. Over the years, we just said, we know it's going to cost a lot of money, so let's just kick the can down the road. So, through the direction from y'all, we, we focused on it. Um, Gradient was selected as the uh, as the most qualified, put them to work, and uh, the final piece in the chapter is their presentation to you tonight. We have uh, Gordon Rose from Gradient and Heath Wadworth, Wadworth from Gradient, and uh, they're going to give a presentation on the findings from their study. All right. Well, gentlemen, welcome. Uh, let us know what you got. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. All right, I'll start. Um, just kind of a, a quick overview. Uh, your main drainage basin coming through town is the Black River, and we're focusing on this purple area right here, which we designated as the Southwest Anger drainage area. It's about 400 acres. And when we started this project, we sat down with town staff and kind of identified what we called, what, what they called concern areas, um, which a lot, a lot of the flooding up around Park Street up to in Depot Street, along MacGyver Street. Um, and then we, we kind of, we looked at the outfalls, we looked at the overall drainage area, and we kind of, we built our model. Um, and luckily, we had some good information. So it's always it's always pretty good to when you're doing a hydraulic model if you have <coughs> some information to start off with to kind of validate where the flooding is. Looks like a bad thunderstorm on yeah. radar. Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. So, so <laughs> August thirty first, twenty twenty. You can see on this radar. Uh, I kind of try to draw it in, but you can see the these little black lines. That's the crossroads, two ten and fifty five. And then wow. you can look at your key over here. And I mean, you know, it was seven to eight inches in eight to nine hour time frame. So it was quite the storm. And then if you look at this graph, this is time, and then this is the the rainfall accumulation. So the steeper it gets, the harder the harder it was raining. So about six thirty to seven, you got you know three inches within about an hour, and then it kind of slacked off, and then it rained hard again at ten o'clock, and you got another three inches or three inches or more. So you'll see, I took this information and I added it to our model and just to kind of, or, you know, so you can tell where you're at. Here's 210 and Wellington Street, Church Street down here. So I'm going to run it through the model this storm and you can see kind of what the flooding looked like. So your big areas are up there on Depot Street. And then... If you, if you remember that graph I was showing you, it got steep and then it got flat. 
So it stopped raining, and then as I got later, you'll see it, it'll, it'll start again. It'll start to flood again as it got later into the evening. And there it goes. And then if you'll, right up here on West D D Depot Street, this house right here, uh, I believe it's 256 West Depot, there's a video of what that flooding actually looked like. And this is probably, since it's really not raining hard, it's probably right in the middle before they even got their second peak. But I'll just let this play so because they do a good job of panning around so you can see. See all the way to the back, back there. All right, so that, I mean, that, it's, it's good to have that information because we know, hey, there, there really is flooding there. So then we take that and build the existing conditions model, and we, we look at an actual design year storm that we can design to. So we looked at the 25-year storm, and this is, if you look at this over here, this is depth. So anything in red is over one foot depth. So you can see that's, this is where that house was that I just showed that video of. So you have a lot of flooding up here. And then down here on Park Street, a lot of flooding in here, and then down on MacIver Street. And there, there's actual crawl space flooding and HVAC flooding um, in, into the actual houses. And then also the, another concern area that we found is down on the, the South Broad Street and hit, hit, Hidden Acres, and that's that's important because that, that road is overtopping and that's the only access to the Hidden Acres estate. And we estimate that that one overtops with uh, less than a 10-year design storm. So it's a pretty frequent overtopping event. And then also, just to kind of point it out, we, we took into account the future of development that we knew of, uh, the Honeycutt, Honeycutt Oaks development. We added that into the model. Um, and, and also added in the, the new stormwater control measure and the impacts, and then also some of the proposed development along West Depot Street. So when we built our model, then we looked at the areas to do the drainage <coughs> improvements in, and we came up with three main areas, and I'll go into those in a little bit more detail. And I kind of wanted to quickly point out the one on mitigation measure number two and why that, why that area was important and I have another, another video to show you. So if, I'm gonna start this video and you'll see when the flooding starts in back to where the house was that I showed the flooding <coughs> in West Depot, you'll see it start to spill out of the system and then watch up in the upper right of the screen <coughs> as that in, where that mitigation measure two is in the existing condition, it gets overwhelmed and it, it, it inundates. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Show that house here on West Depot, right there. So if you saw that, I think I can go back and show that again. But if you see up there, when it starts to, it'll start flooding down here first. And then all of a sudden it'll, this is important to add. So th this is this is a comparison of those three mitigation measures of the existing condition, 25 year storm. And then this is after you put the proposed improvements in. And so, Mitigation measure one is kind of what we consider, I would consider to be the big one. And that's that's really trying to get that, that West Depot Street area up there and get the water down. Because what's happening right now is, is your drainage systems are, are shallower and obviously the pipes are too small. So as soon as that water starts to rise, it just spills. It just spills into those low areas. So you have to get the system larger and get it deeper. And that's what this, that's what this proposes to do. And then it also splits the existing system, so th this still continues to drain this way, but you're taking most of this big drainage area down, out, and then down. Um, and it, <coughs> most of the work for this one is within the right-of-way. There is some easements that, that would need to be, be acquired, uh, but, and then this gets back, this is the two, this is kind of where I was 
showing where you have the topography following away. Um, and then three, mitigation measure three, which is which we consider to be pretty important because it is that that low on access to hidden acres. And this one is, is in my recommendation, if you're going to do one first, this is the one to do because the first two is going to improve the drainage upstream and it's going to make the water get down there quicker. So whatever is down here would flood worse. So you probably need to start, you need to start downstream and work your way back up. So that's it. <coughs> So a 25-year storm is is what you would pro project on average to occur every 25 years as a maximum. It's a it's a it's a st statistical thing. Yeah. And it's a it's a one in 25 chance that it can happen in one in any one year. Okay. So. The 25-year storm. Is. So what is happening and what has happened is that hurricanes come along and blow the whole thing out out of the water, so to speak. Uh, there's no way we can prevent that kind of deluge. Well, you, I mean, you can, it gets really, really, really expensive. And so you have to kind of make a decision as to, you have to pick something that you want to design to. And you may, hopefully you can get those smaller storms, but you know how the hurricanes are. I mean, you, you could get 12 inches of rain and, and you just, most people don't design to that because it's it's just requires too expensive. Structure. Yes, sir. Now, from Hidden Acres, <laughs> it goes downstream uh, towards Wilma Street, doesn't it? Uh, down in that area. Did you, are you familiar right, so with that? It goes into the Black River. I, think, I, I don't think there's another crossing. In, I think it goes directly into the Black River. It goes behind that towards Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, and that place. has been a flooding area as well. If we funnel all this water down into that area, won't we have more problems in that area? I mean, if we funnel it more quickly down there. You're talking about down in here? That's uh, correct. Yes. Yeah, it, you're going to get you're going to get a little bit more water down there, but if if I go back to this original I'll show you the so you But I guess you're draining it all along instead of it overflowing and then coming down. I wanted to go back to this original uh, flood, uh, the uh, drainage basin. So you, this is about, I think this is probably about what you're talking about right here. So you have, there's already so much drainage area and the timing here is different. So you're, you're going to get a little bit more flow down there, but it's not going to be, it's a little bit to a lot, if that makes any sense. If that's not it's something, it's not, not going to change. Yeah, it's that. not. A, it's non-technical. I see. You have a big floodplain. Well, there's there's not a whole lot of depth down near Jimmy Johnson. We no. uh, we had a study done at one point, and they were saying it would take about seven hundred thousand to fix it down in that area. So uh, we uh, didn't do it right then. Could you go back to one slot? I think forward or backwards. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. So um, the yellow where it says one in four, we we're making improvements along Highway 210 with the sidewalk and the drainage. And so we will f uh, fix some of Park Street's issues oh. on that end. So that's being done okay. now. But like he had said earlier, we need to start from – mitigation number three which is hidden acres and work our way up so and that's number nine and that's number nine on so, that chart yeah. so we did receive four hundred thousand dollars from the general assembly and we're going to submit that to the state to get approval and to move forward with that project in next year's budget any other questions from the board no. And the total for this Southwest drainage study is $3.2 million today. We seem to keep accumulating things in that level of funding. We do. And that amount that you just quoted, I mean, that's, that's all three mitigation, mitigation measures that you were talking. Just within that drainage basin. 
We have other areas, but this was the most significant one. But um, can be, I mean, certainly can't be done in stages. And you recommending one is where you begin, move on to two, you know, make that happen. That's correct. So you're recommending we go upstream, so to, so start, to speak, as we can. Start downstream. Downstream, actually. Make downstream bigger. So I'm saying go upstream, go upstream, upstream from yes, there. Yes, sir. Yes. Start. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, down, down at the Hidden Acres. It was uh, double box culverts, seven by sevens. It's pretty big down there. Now, I don't think I have a shit. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm sorry. Double, double eight by sixes. Eight by six. Okay. Yeah, we had to make them low profile too because it's a pretty low through there, and there's utilities. And when you actually get into the the real final design on that, it it, it will be challenging to get everything through there between the two red spaces there that that is open would that be covered when you would you recommend that it be covered or i i i, I wouldn't i would probably leave it open but you know that's that's the way i would probably recommend doing it leaving it open just because you're going to have drainage that's going to be coming in there too that you're going to need to be able to get out the other side Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Uh, yes, that's true. <clears throat> Is that the sewer line that goes down to Jimmy's? <laughs> okay. Any other comments or questions? All right. Well, thank you. Thanks thank you so time. much for your report. Uh, do we have this in some form we can maintain? Yeah. I, I, uh, Good. Okay. Thank you. We also had this was a, this was a condensed PowerPoint presentation, <coughs> but we can make available the full report. There would have to be a link over 100 pages file size. Wow. Um, but, but we have that in any of. I'm just concerned that we preserve the information for your and our use. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. All right. Well, speaking of money and new business, uh, we need to uh, look at some resolutions to except the ARPA funding. Uh, Jerry, you want to explain a little bit about the ARPA funding and what we're doing here? Yes, sir. So this is the American Rescue Plan funding um, from the State Fiscal Recovery Fund. These monies were uh, uh, requested by the, the General Assembly members, uh, Senator Bergen, Representative Strickland and Howard Penny, and you, I've got the amounts here, and you've got the um, resolutions, and I mentioned also the four hundred thousand. But the first part is uh, for sewer capacity at the Harnett County Regional Plant. Um, they are going to expand their plant, um, double the size. They've they're requesting funds as well, um, but this goes towards that capacity at three point two million. If you remember the whiteboard and also my CIP, um, I indicated there were other funding sor sources, um, not only from the General Assembly, but there was federal ARPA money that will also go, go towards the capacity, which is $1.7 million. Um, we're more likely going to look at fund balance with the Water Utility Fund. Um, and then whatever's remaining, we'll look at USDA for financing over 40 years, if there's not other funding available. Just to give us uh, a point of uh, reference, 
Where will the 1.25 million gallons uh, bring us up to in terms of our capacity? Ooh. 2.25. Just over a million. That's correct. Okay. What are we now? 1.4? Yeah. 1 million. Okay. Roughly. So this should carry us for a while, you think? Well, Bill, Bill, submit. You go ahead, Bill. <laughs> we definitely have. Uh, it, it gives us a lot of time. But with what Sean's saying, uh, you know, it just depends on how long this, uh, this development trend continues. Uh, what we did request in the contract um, was hard reason water is the ability to purchase an additional one. Now, right. That will, I mean, there'll be a price tag for that. But if we get to the point where we need enough, this additional one. Okay, good. When you see Bill's rep monthly report, such as when May comes up, you'll see he'll indicate what our existing flow is, and then he'll also indicate what's not yet tributary, which is projects that we have approved but have not been occupied. Okay. And the urban service area would impact this as well. Depending on which way we go. Depending on which that. way we go. Okay. All right. So the first part of this then is to allocate uh, just under three point three million to uh, buy another one point two five million gallons from uh, the the upgraded plant uh, in Lillington. Uh, is there a motion with regard to this uh, resolution 009-2022? Okay, you want us to go ahead and make a motion for the resolution R009-2022? And then we can discuss it, yes. And Yeah, go ahead and discuss it. <laughs> okay, so you're making the motion that we... Go ahead. Approve it. So yes, we approve now it. let's discuss it. So, <clears throat> well, we definitely need it. I mean, there's no way around it. We have to have it. We really do. I mean, we've been kicking the can down the road entirely too long, and it's just going to get a bigger problem if we don't go ahead and start doing something now. And there is increasingly heavy uh, competition for water mm -hmm. resources. So. And and sewer. So, and right now we're in probably the best position to start doing it. Yep. Since we paid off all of our debt. Right. And we've got got the funding. So. Mm -hmm. Other comments or discussion. Anybody else? Well, no. Uh, we, this is not a. We have to do this. Yep. I mean. You know, either that or we put a moratorium on no more. We're not building anything else. We right. got to exactly. deal with what we have. Yep. It's one or the other. Okay. You ready to vote? Yes, sir. All right. All in favor of resolution R009 2022 to accept ARPA funds for the treatment capacity upgrade at North Harnett Regional WWTP. Uh, please raise your right hand. Okay, it's unanimous, uh, Madam Clerk. Thank you. All right, the next resolution also deals with ARPA funds to um, uh, upgrade the water distribution core system and a Juni Road 500,000 gallon elevated water storage tank. As I recall, our pipes, uh, Jimmy started off something like this and have now shrunk down about there mm -hmm. so uh one of the reasons we didn't include downtown in the system with the new tank we got out uh, north uh was that it it would have been a shower everywhere right the pipes would have burst and the kids would have enjoyed it but uh you'd have been busy day and night trying to repair the thing. Uh, 
so the as I understand it, the the replacement of the the pipes is a is a preface has to go before the bu- the building of the new uh, five hundred thousand uh, gallon water tank because mm-hmm. right okay uh, why did you choose a five hundred thousand gallon tank. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this will replace the Juni Road uh, standpipe. Well, the Juni Road standpipe right now is offline. So right now, the only um, um, water tank we have in town or in the Sunshine State limits is a 100,000 gallon solar system. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's actually um, replacing that. So our plan was to try to do this demo of the Juni Road tank, put the um, 500,000 gallon Leroy tank. And it's emergency backup, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let me turn it back to the board. Questions or comments? So, Jimmy, run that really quickly. I think I got all of it. So that understanding, tear down the Juni Road one. This is the new 500,000-gallon one, which will then absorb the one down on Doris Street because it will go away as well. Once the other one is complete to do that, but basically we're in cre- we're in cre- we're just jumping from a hundred thousand gallons to five hundred thousand gallons, mm-hmm. correct? So between tearing one down and putting one up, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, thank you for that info right there. What do you estimate the change in the pressure to be downtown? So from around... But you've got the other tank feeding the northern section, so it should be relatively equal throughout the system, right? Okay. And what is the time frame on that? To to, I forget how long it took you to get the other one done. How, what is the time frame of this in estimate? Okay. So once we approve the resolution tonight, we'll start going out for RFQs for qualifications for engineers to have this engineered for the next six months. All right. Once again. <laughs> go ahead and make the motion. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and make the motion to accept the ARP funds for the proposal of the water distribution course system replacing on Junior Road for the 500,000 gallon eva- <laughs> elevated water storage tank. All right. Motion is in front of you. Uh, any further discussion? or? All right. All in favor of the motion, uh, please raise your right hand. Okay. Good enough. It's unanimous again. 
All right. Um, now, the number three is the Debt Service Reserve Budget Ordinance. Uh, explain it, somebody. Hans will be walking up here shortly. Okay. <laughs> I kind of anticipated that. <laughs> tell it all, Hans. No, don't tell it all. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I, I guess that would be a long evening, wouldn't it? That would, yes. Um, this is just merely a formality. Uh, essentially, to meet the LGC and their requirements as we pursue the funding for the municipal building during the fiscal year 2020 audit, I'm sorry, 2021 audit, there was a finding, very legitimate. That's how good our auditors are. They, they come through it and they found that during the fiscal year 2020 uh, financial statements and uh, basically audit, that we did not uh, portray a fund that we hardly ever look at. Uh, this fund, it's, it's called a debt service reserve fund. Uh, it only has 142,000 in it, and it's something that we didn't have a, really a budget for. Uh, so they found that. Uh, and so, of course, the LGC said, well, okay, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's good. You know, you, you guys want to go for this building. That's good. You still haven't answered how you're going to handle this, this finding, the only finding that we've had. You know, so, eh. So, but essentially, what we're doing tonight is we have this budget ordinance where we're saying, okay, you know, we, we are recognizing this, this fund, this, this money, we're setting up a budget for it, and we're also we're going to dissolve it. So it's like we're setting up a, a fund to merely transfer the money out of the fund into the water sewer fund and dissolve it so okay. that this won't happen mm -hmm. again. So that's how that goes. It, essentially what we were doing is we were, we were funneling money for a future debt service for the next fiscal year, but we did not establish a fund for that fiscal year. Mm -hmm. But we were we knew we were going to have debt service on pump station one and six. We were going to funnel that money so that we could have money set aside ready to pay the debt service, but it had not been established yet. And the auditors say that's a no no. Okay. So. Sounds like a technical fix to me. But. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I make. Was that? Where the money come from? Uh, it basically, well, it came from what, what was a well. I mean, it, it is kind of a fund. It's like a balance sheet fund, but or it has balance sheet lines, so it has like cash on hand, and it has a, a fund balance, uh, uh, equity, you know, liability line item, basically. But it didn't, it didn't have revenue, and expenditure. So, so, so we never really got to see. We never really looked at it. But where did the money come from originally? Is his oh, question? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, good question. Well, well. So over the years, uh, well, when while Vanessa was here, uh, money would be tucked away into that fund to basically more or less meet the state stabilization statute, which is basically saying, okay, we have th this much debt. So we're, we're going to make sure to set aside so much to cover just in case we don't meet our, our obligations. It, it's, it's like a surety. Is it like a sinking fund? Is that an appropriate term? Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. It, yeah, it's more like a sinking fund. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, rainy day kind of. But, 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 but sinking, yeah, yeah. Essentially, it's, it's there sitting there just saying, well, hey, it's it's here if it's if we need it, but we're we're never going to use it. And so, so it, it, truly, over the past three fiscal years, or actually four fiscal years, we had not placed any money in this fund. The way that that we have been 
basically, you know, showing, you know, that hey, you know, we're, we're, we're we've got the money essentially is through the audit, the, the financial statements. What the auditors would do is they would say, so, so yes, no, it's, it's not on your books, but as we do your financials or as we you know crunch your numbers and whatnot, the auditor they'll, they'll basically say, okay, yep, you got this much <laughs> debt. We're going to restrict your revenue to cover that debt. And then basically giving you ultimately a certain net position. So at the end of the day, no, we're not really reflecting it on our books anymore, as we have not in the prior fiscal years. But we have been reflecting it through our financial statements. <coughs> Other words, what I'm going to hear is the same. No, it was put aside bit by bit over the years, yes. Absolutely. No, that's a library, police department. Uh, so, so, so the money came from the water sewer fund. It's a utility fund. So, so or the, or the, okay. uh, the utility fund. So, okay. so uh, yeah, every, uh, basically every fiscal year, about 15000 or so uh, was tucked in an expenditure okay. line. Within the Very good. Fund. That and makes sense. Yeah. So in a, in a sense, what the auditors were saying was you were counting on this money in the water sewer fund, but it wasn't in the water and sewer fund. Is that a fair statement? I believe what they were saying is we there was a fund established for revenue, but there was no fund established to expend it. It was only set up as a reserve fund. I see. But mm -hmm. there was no accountability for expenditures. Mm -hmm. We would have done it the following fiscal year, but we didn't for that fiscal year. I see. Okay. Gotcha. My point was, uh, for the reason I asked the question, it's strictly utility fund. That's correct. It's kind, of, kind of like putting money in a savings account, in mm -hmm. a way. That's, yeah, yeah that, that, that is a good fine-tuning question right there. Yeah, it has nothing <clears throat> to do with the general fund. True. Right this on. Is water uh, utility fund uh, only. So, okay. So uh, yeah. go ahead. Uh, you Al. said um, uh, you said we hadn't put any money in this in several years. I'm just curious. Then why this year did they f suddenly find this and flag it? Because we were, we're going to the uh, local government commission for the finance in the town hall, and they look at all your finances. And this one stood out to them as yeah. a finding. Maybe I'll find some more. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> here, here. Keep looking. Unfortunately, okay, so this the, was the only one. <laughs> so the ordinance then uh, sets up a pr uh, appropriates to the debt service ref uh, reserve fund and then transfers it over to the water and sewer, the ordinance does. Is that a f fair statement? Yes. Okay. That's the end goal. Is there a motion? I make a motion to adopt the debt service reserve budget ordinance. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion, uh, please raise your right hand. All right. That, then it passes unanimously. Thank you. And I don't mean to discriminate if some of you are left-handed i will i will gladly call for you to raise your left hands if, if that would help anybody anyway hmm. all right number four is and your rezoning i don't think we have anything in our presentation here about that uh oh, there it is thank you sir mm -hmm. Good evening, board. Good evening. Last item on our agenda tonight, um, came across a strange zoning scenario I want to run by you guys to get the board up to speed on. Um, I passed out a an aerial screenshot from Wake County GIS showing the property in question. A little over two acres, owned by Morris Coates and Stuart Matthews, uh, on Highway 55, just over the Wake County line, right across the street from Sunny Skies, to give everybody some reference. Um, this, is there a tank there on that on the back of that property? Just a, a, a billboard sign. I thought there was a water tank back behind that. There's a cell tower back behind. Oh, that. cell tower! I'm sorry. Yes, sir. You're right. Yes, sir. Parcel behind it. Um, I'll be all right. <clears throat> this property was zoned commercial back when it was in Wake County's jurisdiction in 1977. Carried that commercial zoning up until 2015, when the town took it into its ETJ. Um, 
from the approval we got from the Wake County Board of Commissioners. Okay, so the property owners were of the understanding that the property would remain commercial zoning when Andrew took it into our jurisdiction. To their surprise, a couple weeks ago when I was meeting with the property owners about um, what they might like to develop there in the future, um, I informed them that that property is RA30, residential and agricultural, 30,000 square foot lots. Of course, they were um, very surprised and brought me some some documentation from their rezoning back in the 70s. Um, also printed you a copy of the May 13th, mm -hmm. 2015 letter the town sent to all of the ETJ <clears throat> property owners, um, letting them know that the town would be um, including their properties in our ETJ in Wake County. Um, the reason I printed the board a copy of this one is because I think the language in that last paragraph is contradictory. And if I were a property owner who received this letter, I would have um, questions. Um, I'm just going to read the last paragraph here for you. It says, your current zoning district will not change unless you formally request a change. Again, the town's zoning district will mirror your existing district. If, however, you foresee your property being used for something other than residential, and we change it to RA30. I'm not sure if that was just a simple oversight when we redid our zoning map. Um, seems to me like the property is perfectly situated for commercial use, right on Highway 55. This is actually the property where the bypass will tie into existing 55, mm -hmm. right across this parcel. So a great spot for commercial use. Um, ran this scenario by Dan a few weeks ago just to get his thoughts on it. Um, we agree that the, um, the formal procedure to, is, is to get a rezoning, regardless of whether or not a mistake was made back in 2015. Um, still got to do the process, hold the public hearing, get the planning board's recommendation to get the zoning map changed. So uh, Mr. Coates and Mr. Matthews have already submitted their rezoning. They're on the schedule for the May planning board. Okay. The reason I came to you tonight was to see if the board's willing to consider a waiver of his rezoning application fee based on the confusion back in 2015 and their understanding is that their, their property would remain commercial. Are there other instances where we have declined to waive it or where we have waived it? What's what's our history here? Not to my knowledge. Um, this is kind of a weird scenario. I agree. Yeah. What's the feeling? What's the discussion of the board? What do y'all think? I'm not going to comment because no matter what I say, it'll look like I'm being supportive of my relatives and i'm not so i'm oh, not going to okay. comment i'll vote because i have no financial gain of anything to come from it but i'm going to refrain from commenting okay fair enough any other comments sir was uh, uh landowners notified this letter this letter was all that they could um produce that they had received there were public hearings held, as far as I could tell. Um, but if I got this letter and I was a property owner, I would I would think, why why do I need to go to the public hearing? You just said my right. zoning is not going to change. Right. You know. Correct. It says residential. It says residential. residential. Mm -hmm. yep. I think the letter was written to approve something that was already done. Part of that paragraph says it's not going to change, but if you want some other than residential. So your theory of waiving the fee is that it was our mistake. I think it should have remained commercial zoning when we took it in our ETJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll go ahead and bite the bullet. I think we ought to waive his fees. I make a motion that we do that. There is a motion. Exactly. Okay. Any further discussion of that? And this is a one-time deal and not, not yeah. something we normally do. So. Right. All right. You ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All in favor, please raise your left hand. Opposed? Uh, left hand. 
<laughs> okay, it's it's three one, Madam Clerk. Um, you'll see this rezoning at your June seventh meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that appears to be uh, the end of our agenda. <laughs> Any? Hey, before you move forward on that, I think again, want to. I know we kind of got slipped through the cracks, but we recognizing your birthday. Oh, that, yes. Uh, recently, since our last meeting, and Mr. Jerry over there as well. That's true. This yeah. was Sunday, wasn't it? Mine was Thursday. Very much. It was an auspicious week. Right. Thank you. Thank yes, so happy absolutely. Birthday happy birthday to both of you. Hope you're blessed with many more. Oh, thank you. All right. Anything else? Uh, one quick question. So, yes, sorry for for Jerry. Um, Jerry, are so uh, did we move along? We're okay with the still pressing ahead to purchase this land behind. Um, uh, uh, thanks a lot, Tay. Yes, I have an appraiser. Dan and I are working with the appraiser to to get the wording right. So it'll take thirty days to appraise it. So we're still waiting on that. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just curious. It's so it's a, still in the works. Still in the works. Um, Dan has contacted the attorney for the park property, so everything Great. looks in order. They're just going to send the originals for us to sign, and then we issue a check. Great. Okay. Ready for that one. I had, Sounds like a uh, point. Just bring it. Okay. Excellent. And, just, uh, go ahead, Bob. Well, just off the ball, excuse me. Uh, should we get an option on that property? That you're having the appraisal done for? I believe the direction of the board was to get the appraisal and then contact Mr. Take. Arnett. I'm going to contact Mr. Arnett and see if that price was good and that could save us money in going to court. Right. And if we agree to it, we're fine. If not, then we'll proceed to court and put money in there. And so that would preserve it. Right that would there. preserve it. And, and even if it was transferred, you could still proceed. Okay. Yes. That answers my issue. Sorry, Alan. No, no, no. Go ahead. That, that was good. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a comment, please. I spoke with yes, Attorney sir. Hartside today. Um, in the future, when a board member is not present, uh, I know I would appreciate, and the ones that's not going to be here, that when you make the announcement that we're not here, that you just basically say we're not here, you don't tell them where we're at and how long we're going to be gone for liability reasons. Fair enough. Forward. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. I received that. Okay. And by that, I make the motion that we adjourn. All in favor, raise both your hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Yes, I think part of us have signed it. Yeah. I think we got it. <laughs>